Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today is day seven of our seven days of Christmas event. Every day for the first week of December, we're releasing an extra video. So that's a lot of videos. I definitely filmed more than seven. So I hope you guys have enjoyed all the extra content as much as I've enjoyed making it. And today I'm gonna show you guys how I put scrapbook paper on my tumblers to create this beautiful, vintage Santa design. I had a lot of fun learning how to do this and I hope you guys enjoy this video. So that's enough chit chat from me. Let's go ahead and get started. you guys so we're starting with a fully prepped and sanded cup i'm using a 20 ounce stubby from craft haven and when i say fully prepped and sanded that just means that i did my normal prep process with my cup with the final sand product if you need help on prepping your cups i will link a video down below that you might find helpful I'm going to line the inside of my cup with some masking tape because I'm not using a cup arm for the first part of this design process. And I don't want to get any Mod Podge inside my cup because it is kind of hard to get out if that stuff dries up in there. So I'm just going to put this tape in real quick and that's going to be really helpful for us later. And so once I've got all the inside of my cup taped off, I'm going to start trimming up my paper. I'm using Paper Studios scrapbook paper. It's the thinner one of the options that you have. So this is not textured scrapbook paper. It's like the thinner kind of scrapbook paper, <laughs> okay? And I wanna trim this up before I get it on the cup. I am using a cup that's completely straight. There is no taper to this cup and that's gonna make this project so easy. I would not have the patience to do this process on a cup that had any kind of taper or curve to it. So if you are able to find a straight cup, there are many options available for straight cups on the Craft Haven website, which I will have linked down below along with a discount code. So all I did was measure the height of my cup against that the bottom half of our paper and marked it. And I did the same on the other end. And then I used my ruler to trim across. So I end up with a strip of paper that is the same height as my cup. And I already know it is wide enough to reach around the full width of my cup. I'm going to use some regular matte Mod Podge. I don't think it really matters what kind of Mod Podge you use, whether you have like glossy, matte, dishwasher safe, or whatever. I'm also going to be wearing gloves for this because it is super messy and I really hate the feeling of Mod Podge in my hands. I think it's super gross. So I've got my cup, I've got a little thing of Mod Podge here, and I've got a special Mod Podge brush. I will have a link down below on where you can find this brush, but it's my favorite brush to use. I also have a bowl of hot water with Dawn dish soap to put my brush in immediately when we're done. I'm gonna first wrap my paper around the cup so I can get a feel for how it's gonna work and just to double check that I have the right size. Don't worry if some of your top rim and your bottom rim is showing, we're gonna deal with that later. So I'm gonna pick up some Mod Podge with my brush here and I'm going to brush the Mod Podge all the way around the cup. If you get any kind of like chunky bits in your glue, just pull that out of the glue because we don't wanna leave too much chunky bits in the glue. So just like you would apply glue to apply glitter with Mod Podge, we're gonna be doing the same to apply this paper. You wanna make sure that your cup is not warm and that you're not working in a really hot area because your Mod Podge should not be drying super fast. You want this to dry slower because we wanna have some more working time with our paper, okay? So add a good, pretty generous amount of the glue on there and then make sure you have everything spread out nice and evenly. Okay, and once I've got all my glue spread on there, I'm going to set my cup up onto a piece of parchment paper and I'm going to wrap my paper 
around the cup with my paper flat against the table so that I know that my paper's going on straight. So in other words, I'm using the table with the edge of my paper on it to keep the paper straight. So I know that once it makes its way to the cup, it's on there as straight as it could be. And with the cup standing straight up, I'm just going to wrap that paper around as well as I can and then match up the seams here in the back. Now, I'm not one of those people who really cares about seams. I know that these seams don't match. I know that the pattern isn't seamless, but that doesn't really bother me. If this, if you're somebody who this, if you're bothered by this, then you may want to pick a scrapbook paper that is seamless or has a pattern that's a little easier to hide those inconsistencies in the pattern once you get to the back seam. I never really care about this, whether it's vinyl or scrapbook paper, whatever. I just, I let it be. That is what it is. So I've got some overlap here where the paper met up a little bit and I'm just going to paint over that with Mod Podge. You'll want to get a little bit of that Mod Podge underneath that overlap of paper, which we'll do here in a minute, but I first want to brush all of that paper as flat as I can get it against my cup, paying close attention for any kind of wrinkles. And you want to avoid putting like a really large amount of pressure on any parts of the paper so that it doesn't start to like wrinkle or get out of line. So you'll see I put a little bit of Mod Podge underneath that overlap of paper and then using my hands while the glue is wet, I am going to kind of press with the overlap. <laughs> that makes sense. Like press it down with my hands against the cup and just try to feel for any kind of air bubbles or wrinkles. You want to avoid excessive pressure so that you're not moving the paper around on the cup. Also, this paper has a tendency to like rip or the printing off the top will rip off if you're not careful. So you do still kind of want to be gentle with it. But you also want to press firmly enough to get this flat and to get all of the wrinkles out. I'm going to be honest with you guys. The first time I did this, I had to completely trash the whole thing. If that happens to you, it's not a big deal. Mod Podge is water soluble. So you could just pull off as much paper as you can, take it to the sink, get some steel wool or a scouring pad, and just wash all the glue and the paper off, okay? Preferably do that in like a utility sink or something because you don't want to wash Mod Podge down your sink. Um, but it's really easy to get off if you mess up, okay? So we're just gonna work on smoothing this out as well as we can. And when we start to feel some of that glue really drying and our finger starts dragging against the edges, I'm gonna set this down and I'm gonna let it dry for a good five to 10 minutes. After this is dried for about five to 10 minutes, we're gonna take this to our little paper trimmer tool from the Wicked Shimmer. I'll have a link and a discount code listed down below in the description box for this tool if you wanna use it. And you're just going to roll your cup along the razor of the cup edger, okay? And this is just gonna help us nicely trim the edge of our paper along the top and bottom rim. You'll notice that my paper is ripping a little bit in the video because I didn't let it dry long enough. You don't wanna attempt this when your cup is super wet because you can rip your paper. It's gonna be messy. So just let it dry for the good five to 10 minutes <laughs> before you take this to the paper edger tool, okay? I did the same thing along the top rim that I did along the bottom rim. And don't worry if this looks perfect or not, it's fine because we're gonna cover the top and bottom rim of our cup with glitter. So don't worry if it looks crazy, it's gonna come together, just trust the process. <laughs> there was a small part of my paper that ripped up a little bit um, and so I had to patch that up with an identical piece of the pattern from the salvaged side of the paper that I used. So I had some extra of this paper and I just cut out an identical spot in the pattern and I glued that over 
the ripped part of my paper with some extra Mod Podge and then I, you know, flattened it with my finger and then I put some extra Mod Podge over it and you couldn't even tell. Like it just, it fit right in. So if that happens to you and some of your paper rips in the middle, you could use the same kind of patch technique if you had a boo-boo there, okay? I would recommend buying extras of these patterns. So if you plan on doing this, don't just buy one sheet. Buy a few of them just in case you mess up because it would be a real shame <laughs> if you got through the middle of this and you messed up and you only had one sheet. So I'm glad I bought extras. <laughs> I let all this dry for a good 30 minutes or so and then I went back in to put another coat of Mod Podge on and uh, that bowl of soapy water there, make sure you keep your brush in there immediately after you're done applying the glues because these brushes are expensive and if that glue even dries on there for a second, it's really hard to get off. So anyway. This is me just putting the second coat of Mod Podge on here. And what you're looking for is full coverage at the top and bottom seams of your paper and along the edges. And you'll know you got full coverage because it will look foggy, okay? So you wanna make it look foggy around all of the cup. Okay, and once I've got full coverage around my whole cup, I'm going to set this on a piece of parchment paper and put it somewhere safe to dry for about 30 minutes to an hour. You want to make sure that this coat is fully dry before you move on until your finer, final coat of Mod Podge. Okay, and so my cup's been sitting for about an hour and I just went around to double check that everywhere was totally dry and I'm going over everything again for a really generous final coat. It's super important that you put three strong coats of Mod Podge on these paper cups because if you don't have a nice layer of protection to seal the paper, your epoxy is going to penetrate the paper and make the paper look greasy. So it's really important that you take the time to really seal this paper. One of my least favorite parts about using paper to cover tumblers, which is why I prefer using printed vinyl because it's kind of just a one-step process and I personally find it a lot easier. However, some of you have told me how much you really struggle with getting the vinyl on the cups. So you may disagree with me and you might find this way easier. There's also, you know, something to be said about the variety of scrapbook paper to choose from. I mean, there's so many different beautiful prints and things. I had a lot of fun picking these papers out. And it's also more cost effective than printed vinyl as well because you could get a sheet of scrapbook paper for, you know, less than 50 cents. Whereas a 12 by 12 sheet of printed vinyl can be anywhere between 250 to 450 um, you know, depending on where you're getting it and if you're getting it on sale or what have you. So this is extra work, but it is more cost effective and you do have more of a variety on your prints. So that's kind of the difference there. So anyway, once we've got this totally coated with Mod Podge with, with a nice generous coat, paying special attention to the tops and bottom to make sure we've got the top and bottom seam fully sealed there. I'm going to set it back down on the parchment paper and I'm going to let this dry overnight. And by overnight, I mean a full like 18 to 20 hours. I do not want any bit of this Mod Podge to be moist or wet or anything at all. We want this to be bone dry before we move on to our epoxy. So my cup has been drying for probably over 24 hours actually. I let it sit for a really long time and it's bone dry. I'm ready to put some epoxy on for uh, like epoxy method glitter. I've mixed five milliliters of epoxy and I'm using less than one milliliter of epoxy. And I'm spreading this just over my Mod Podge scrapbook paper. So I did not do another layer of epoxy before this or anything like that. We're spreading this super, super thin coat right over our scrapbook paper here that's been drying for over a day, 
okay? If you're having a hard time spreading your epoxy on, put your cup in front of a small space heater just for a little bit, just to get the surface of it warm, and that will help that epoxy glide on like butter. And we really want to get a thinner than usual epoxy coat on here. I'm talking one dip of your finger into that pot of epoxy has to be enough to cover the whole cup. And if it's not, get your cup a little bit warm and that's gonna help move that epoxy even further so you can really get all the coverage you need with a very, very thin layer of epoxy. Okay, we're gonna put our glitter on now. I'm using Gold Member. This is a beautiful fine gold glitter from PG Olive Glitters, one of my favorite golds. And I'm going to shoot for full coverage around the very bottom of my cup like this, and then about a half inch around the full bottom rim, I wanna get good solid coverage. And then I'm gonna move on into my fade. For this, you want to be extremely careful. Take your time with this because if we mess up, we don't get a do-over, okay? We would mess up all of that hard work that we did with the scrapbook paper, okay? So I'm gonna angle my cup up at a 45 degree angle and I'm gonna hold my glitter shaker at least 18 inches away from my cup and I'm going to carefully tap out a small amount of glitter aiming for the bottom corner rim of my cup. And that's gonna create that cascading effect coming up um, from the bottom of the cup. I'm gonna repeat that process again for the top of the cup. So around the top rim, I'm getting solid coverage for that first half inch. Then I'm gonna tilt my cup at a 45 degree angle and I'm going to very lightly and very carefully tap out a small amount of glitter aiming for that very top rim. This is gonna give us that like double ombre effect around the top and the bottom of the cup that is so beautiful and especially with this print, I think it's just such a vintage feel. So we're gonna really take our time with this, guys. And then once we get a good amount of that gold member on there and it's looking good, I am gonna go through and see if there's any kind of like super weird areas that I need to pick out with a gloved hand. You aren't gonna get much off of there through the middle of that cup, so don't really try too hard. I just got a few pieces out. Then I'm gonna go over all of this work with Dorothy. Dorothy is a super fine cut gold. It's a newer color and it is a gorgeous sparkly gold. I'm just adding in this extra fine glitter to kind of cover any gaps that I might've made with my gold member. It's also gonna give it more of a vintage champagne gold feel, which I just thought was mwah, beautiful. I love how this turned out. I love the sparkle with these two glitter colors. So if you guys have Dorothy and gold member, this is going to be beautiful. If you only have one gold glitter, totally fine. You guys can make this however you want. I just love how this champagne gold came together. You're gonna tap off all of your excess glitter and then we're gonna leave this on the turner to dry for about two to three hours before we go in for our first coat of epoxy. Normally we would let this hang dry on a rack, but because we have those open areas of epoxy, you want to put this on the turner to dry for the full two to three hours because if we hang this to dry, some of that glitter will kind of shift down. It needs to stay in motion to dry so that it finishes looking like this. Okay, so after that glitter and epoxy layer has dried, um, mine dried in about two to three hours, I'm gonna put my first layer of epoxy on. This first layer was 30 milliliters of epoxy and after I applied it, I let it dry for four to six hours, and then I went right in for a second coat. I didn't do anything between the first and second coat. All I did was wait four to six hours and then go straight into a second coat. That second coat of epoxy was about 20 milliliters of epoxy, and I let that coat dry for eight to 12 hours before we moved into our sanding. So our second coat has dried for over 12 hours and we're ready to start on our sanding. To get started with this one, I'm going to remove that tape that we had on the inside of that cup because it's no longer necessary. And then I'm going to start on sanding the rim like I normally would. You guys have seen me do this a few times before. I just want to go a little bit more into depth with it in this video. For this one, I'm using a 60 grit sanding block. It's my favorite sanding block <laughs> and I'm holding it at a 45 inch. 45 degree angle to the cup 
and you just want to sand and sand and sand around that top rim until you get a thin line of stainless steel. Some people do this with electric sanders, some people do it with Dremels. I personally, I just really like the feel of a sanding block and I like the control that I have. Here you can see that thin line of stainless steel is starting to form, but I've got some tricky parts here where the epoxy was really thick around the top rim and it's gonna be super hard for me to sand all of that down. So when I come across that, I'm just gonna get out my craft knife or your X-Acto knife and I'm going to scrape off those really thick bits that came up around the top rim of my cup. These were especially hard to get off because it was like dried Mod Podge plus dried epoxy over it. So it was a little bit stubborn. So again, my knife is just gonna help me clean up that top rim really quick and then we'll go back in to smooth everything out with my sanding block. I have that top rim taken care of. I'm going to start sanding the bottom rim. You want to be really careful because we only have two layers of epoxy over our glitter at this point. If you could still feel a large amount of glitter through these two layers, you'll want to stop your sanding and go straight into a third coat um, because you don't want to risk sanding through those layers and damaging your glitter layer. I'm also going to take the time to sand any like pokey bits on the sides and things like that so everything's nice and smooth and ready for when we're going to put our decal on. I'm also going to smooth out the bottom of this cup. Now I noticed that my cup has a bit of a fat bottom. Looks like we got a bit of a wobbly bottom on this one where my cup just wasn't level on the cup arm for whatever reason. That cup arm was in there just a little wonky and I ended up with a wobbly bottom. I'm going to show you how to easily remedy a wobbly bottom and it's really important that you guys make sure that your cups are not wobbly on the bottom. So I've got a 60 grit sanding paper here. So this is 60 grit sandpaper and holding my cup firmly and straight against my table, I'm gonna run that against my sanding paper. Just like you see here, you're gonna hold the bottom base of your cup and run the bottom of your cup over that sandpaper really firmly. If you don't have a lot of arm strength or hand strength, this is gonna be difficult for you. You might wanna have someone help you out with this because it's, it's even difficult for my hand strength. Like I have a hard time doing this and I don't have to do it very often. Um, but it will very quickly and easily help you with that wobbly bottom. I'm going to like kind of smooth out those sand lines with my sanding block and now you can see my cup is no longer wobbly. I'm going to finish out that bottom rim a little nicer and I really do like my sanding to be almost near completed by the time I go into my final coats so I don't have to sand again. I'm ready to apply my decals and my final coats of epoxy. I've already rinsed off my cup with some warm water and dish soap and I dried it off with coffee filters and I've already cut my decals. I've got both the offset layer and the top layer cut. If you guys need some help with offsetting your decals, I have a video link down below that might help you out with that. And I know we are definitely due for an updated offset video, so I will help you guys out with that after the first of the year. I promise we will do a better video on how to offset your images or shadow or layer your vinyl like you're gonna see here. So I'm gonna very carefully roll the paper backing off of my decal so it easily transfers onto my transfer tape. And then I'm gonna eyeball it over my offset layer and just plop it down there very carefully. <laughs> and once I have that all matched up nicely, I'm gonna press it down firmly with my vinyl scraper. And then I'm gonna flip my decal over and loosen up that paper backing so that when I go to transfer it onto my cup, it transfers without any kind of drama. Okay, 
Okay, and once we get down there on the cup, I'm just going to press really firmly across the whole surface of that decal and then carefully remove my transfer tape. And here we are. I love the look of this decal. I love this frosted champagne gold vinyl. I've been using this a lot. It's from the vinylpeople.com. I'll have a link for this vinyl as well as a discount code down below in the description box. Once we've got our decal on there nicely, we're ready to go into our final layer of epoxy. This one took me just two more layers of epoxy at 15 milliliters each, and we were done. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys love this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and we will see you again tomorrow. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.